I understand the pain and trauma that these crimes can have. I'm confident that this package will ease some of that burden while ensuring that justice is served for those who commit these crimes. Governor Gretchen Whitmer is signing the Crime Victims' Rights into law just yesterday. It makes it easier for survivors of sexual violence to testify because all too often victims will stop showing up to court for fear of reliving their trauma or facing their abuser. And the person accused of the crime walks free. But is there a new form of justice right in front of us? A mid-Michigan sheriff says yes, and he's watched it accelerate the wheels of justice. I need Murphy in here. Deep within the impenetrable walls of the county jail. Okay, how long did they stay there? I don't know that much. Okay. Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson okay. is getting briefed. This is Thursday. Correct. Got it. Uh, Preparing to unlock a powerful weapon. Okay. They had up at her mom's house. And what were they doing there? Unleashing his latest case. How long did they stay there? On social media. And I'm not going to say that I'm there, but was it about the daughter? I average about two and a half million people per month that I'm able to uh, touch the hearts of. And sometimes it's a teaching moment, sometimes it's a wake-up moment, sometimes it's a fun moment. Got it. Swanson is a master at harnessing the power of social media. Now, whatever I talk about, Kevin will upload right on the computer as I'm sitting here talking direct to camera. Using his boisterous personality. Tough talk. You can't let people sit there and die. And serious subject matters. Please come forward, call 911. To directly reach his office's more than 119,000 Facebook followers. That power of the platform many times gets others to talk. It's uh, a, a platform where people feel safe coming forward. Swanson's forward thinking using his high tech tool often strengthens his lengthy investigations and opens up older cases that may have gone cold. The story is unbelievable, and I'm going to share it with you at 1 o'clock, so stay tuned because... He used this method in the case against Michael Barajas, who was charged after Swanson says his team rescued a 20-year-old human trafficking victim after she was taken to Hurley Medical Center for a medical emergency. And when we broke the story just before Christmas, I knew the call to action was to use the media, the friends in the media, to give that courage that's needed. He looked at, you know, his style, you know, with, with filed down teeth, his facial tattoos, his demeanor. I mean, there was a, a full persona of intimidation and fear. Swanson's own fear became reality when all charges against 37-year-old Barajas for that case were dropped when the victim failed to appear in court for the preliminary examination. But a Hail Mary. She saw the news story and she has enough courage to come forward and tell her story. He says someone recognized Barajas from all the videos and came forward for the first time after nearly 20 years, claiming Barajas sexually assaulted her more than 100 times for five years when she was a child. Barajas is charged with nine counts, including criminal sexual conduct and witness intimidating, and the case is moving forward in circuit court. If they see a individual charged and held accountable, Usually that's the one last thing that gives them the courage to come forward because many times they believe that nobody would take them serious. We want people to come forward. We want people to feel comfortable. It's still to be seen what happens with his investigation into Eugene Pratt. A man came forward claiming he was sexually assaulted by Pratt in 2013. At the time, Pratt served as the principal for Beecher Adult and Alternative Education. A longtime educator of more than 20 years, Pratt started working in 1986 and moved around several school districts. Beecher, Hamity, Grand Blanc, Kersley. Pratt was charged with criminal sexual conduct in the first degree, the most severe charge possible for a sex crime. We are confident that the charge that we have with Eugene Pratt is very solid. But as time went on, the case proved it wasn't as solid as Swanson believed. The sole victim to go on the record didn't show up to court, ghosting Swanson and his team, ultimately closing the door on the case against Pratt. A judge dropped the charge against the 57-year-old educator. I know that maybe their circumstances have changed to the point where maybe uh, this point they don't want to come forward, but maybe in a couple months they do. If we're going to take away somebody's freedom 
Every single statement needs to be tested, and for good or for bad, that does include the victim's testimony as well. Criminal defense attorney Nick Robinson says the majority of cases never go to trial. According to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, one of the nation's largest anti-sexual violence organizations, only 28 out of every 1,000 sexual assault cases will lead to a felony conviction. Anybody from law enforcement that is making any statements prior to a case coming to completion, they have to be very, very careful about what they say because that could always come back to backfire them. I don't like when a case falls apart because of a victim not showing up. Technically, it's not a backfire because I had no control over it, but it doesn't give me closure. I like to see things come start to finish. What people don't understand is that when anybody is charged with a crime, no matter whether it's a big crime or a small crime, it affects not only them, but there's a ripple effect to everybody in their entire life. There's a whole family that who, who's heartbroken for another whole set of circumstances. That family, the Rickmans. Eric Rickman believes his younger brother, Tony, could have helped Sheriff Swanson with his investigation. But tragedy struck the Rickman family when Tony died by suicide while in college in April of 1999. Tony was into everything, baseball, golf, uh, basketball, you know, great at everything he did, you know. Was yeah. he a good student? Very good student. Rickman says Eugene Pratt was Tony's teacher and started writing Tony letters when Tony was in sixth grade. Rickman says the letters continued all the way into college, letters the family never knew about until years later when Pratt put them into scrapbooks for Tony. The letters from Pratt would thank Tony for going to get ice cream with him and repeatedly remind Tony that he cared about him. You're a great student, you're a great athlete, you're a great this, your favorite student of the week, you know, Thanks for going to Dairy Queen with me. Thanks for doing this with me. Here's, you know, 50 bucks. Here's $100. Rickman says they'll never know the meaning behind the letters because Tony took his own life when he was 19 years old on Rickman's wedding day. My family has been crushed for 24 years. That's all they think about. I mean, it's, it's kind of... I mean, this happened on my wedding day at that, right? And the pressure that has been overwhelming has taken a great toll on families. I think Sheriff Swanson's heart is in the right place. I think that Sheriff Swanson cares about protecting people. I think that Sheriff Swanson cares about protecting his family. And we're breaking the story today at 1 o'clock on all the social media channels. And if social media is something that helps him make his job a little bit easier, I have to live in this area. And if this area is safer, I have no problem. 5000 on a bond. More details to come at 1 o'clock today. Stay tuned. I'm never going to stop. If, if there's a victim that needs to be heard, I'll wait for them. We attempted to reach Eugene Pratt. His former attorney said he would inform him that we'd like to speak with him. And the chief public defender said on behalf of Michael Barajas, quote, we motioned for the case that was newsworthy to be dismissed, and now he will be going to trial on a different case with similarly alleged facts in the former case.